I was invited to this peace convention by a friend. And I came here because it was called a peace convention. But I, I found this catalog, I think a booklet, that said something about Yusuf. It was written that raised as a strong Christian, educated in Texas, USA, he became very successful owning music stores, television shows, and was a music minister and preacher of the Bible. So I want to ask you, sir, as a preacher of the Bible, what was the, what was the reason or the point or the truth that you found in Islam that led to your conversion as a strong Christian and preacher of the Bible? That's a beautiful question. Because there's lights in my eyes, I don't know exactly where you are. Can you hold up your hand? Where I am here, sir. There you are. I'm sorry. Now I see you. Your name is Gabriel? Yes, sir. In Arabic, it's Jibril. That's the angel I was talking about. Thank you. We're very happy to have you with us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And it's a pleasure for you to ask such a question in such a nice way. I'm privileged uh, to ask you that question. I wish I was there. I could give you a big hug. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Because when I was a Christian, see, I wasn't nice like you. You're nice. I was tough, you know. Uh, because I thought I had to save the world, I'm going to go out and preach a message. And, you know, I'm still a little wacko. Don't get me wrong, but not near as bad as I was. What I found... This is important to know. What I found was in my Bible first. What I found was in my Bible first. Because I used to travel with a lot of the so-called preachers of Christianity. And some of the ones that I traveled with, they don't represent real Christianity, by the way, but I traveled with them and I learned that I couldn't trust them. Especially when they would pick up the Bible and say, the Bible says, the Bible says, and afterwards I would say, it didn't say that. They say, who cares as long as the people think so. And so it bothered me so much that I started trying to really read and understand many different translations of the Bible. But they didn't match. So I said, well, obviously, you know, translation is not the real thing. I need to learn Koine Greek. I knew that the Latin, I had already studied Latin, and I knew that the Vulgate was only a translation of Koine Greek anyway. So when I went to the Koine Greek, it was hard. That was really hard, because those characters, they're, they're confusing, you know. I don't know if you know Greek, but it's weird Greek to me anyway. Then I come to know that, oh, by the way, actually Jesus' language was a form of Hebrew called Aramaic. A form of Semitic language called Aramaic. And I had no clue what that was. So I tried to learn the Hebrew. Now all along the way I'm taking, okay, interlinear Bible. I don't know if you know what that is. That's when you have the word in English and under it will have the word in Kone Greek. And you can look it up. Now, people like Ahmed Didat, Rahim Allah, and Dr. Zachar Naik, they have these giant computer brains, okay? I don't have that. Giant computer brains, they can process all this stuff in their head. And I traveled with Zachar many times, and I have to tell you, he can really do that any time, but this is not my subject. When I was studying it, I came to realize that there was a book called Strong's Concordance of the Bible. My father had a copy, so I would sit there. It's big. It's a very big book. And I would go through and look for these words. And then it will tell you in Kone Greek what's the root what it comes from and what it's related to and where it's in the Bible and then all of a sudden I started discovering something really big there's a whole lot of interpolation 
because if you look over here, the same exact word means one thing, but over here it means something else. And then statements that people say about the Bible are not true. If I quote to you from what we have in the Quran, I can quote it to you in the Arabic language. But how many people do you know that can quote the Bible in the original Aramaic of the New Testament or ancient Hebrew of the Old Testament? Not very many people, right? But I want you to look, while well, you're standing right there, Gabriel, look around this room right here. Now, I, I don't know most of these people. Some of them know me from TV or something like that, but they don't really know me. But if I open this book on any page and I start quoting out of this thing, believe it or not, they will know if I'm making mistakes. There'll be somebody in this room that can tell you, no, it's a mistake. You said it wrong. But I'm just going to go to the first page. There we go. This is the first page. What's the first letter? First letter in the first page. Anybody know? Tell us. Ba. Everybody knows it's Ba. So what's the word? Bismillah. This is Arabic. And keep in, keep in mind, this is the English program we're doing. I'm speaking some form of English right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Next words. Ar Rahman or Rahim. Iyaka da'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Surat al Ladina and Amta alayhim. Amen. You don't have to say I mean except in Islam, but you know. Anyway, now you could say, Gabriel, oh, well, I mean, you know, that could be a rehearsal thing that people do every day. And guess what? You'd be right. You're right. We, That's what we I'm do thinking. say that. We'd say it every day, five times a day we pray, but there are a total of 17 times we say it. So you could say, ah, they just know that. But by the way, how about if I mispronounce something? Would they catch it? Ghairul magdubi alayhum waladalim. Whoops. Huh? Huh? Ooh, yeah, alayhim. Huh? Actually, it's both because there is another pronunciation, but the common one. Now, I want to go to the other side, though. I'm going to go to the back. I'll go to the back. That was the front. This is the back. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allah. Allah. Lam. Wa lam. Wa lam. That's in the back. Whoops. How about the middle? It's not actually dead middle, okay, but it's close to the middle. In Adina? How about that? That's chapter 3, verse 19, by the way. Kuntin Chayra Umatin? That's chapter 3, verse. 110. Now, what I'm showing you is that we know this in Arabic. Every Muslim on the earth knows this book in the Arabic language. That's 1.6 billion know that it's in Arabic. And we have some of it memorized, and all of us know it's only in Arabic. No, wait. This is where it gets good. How many in this room, you know somebody who memorized the whole entire Quran cover to cover? Raise your hand. In Arabic. 
You, you met somebody, you know somebody, somebody in your family, raise your hand. I did this in a university in the United States. I said, now, for the Christians, raise your hand if you ever met anybody in your life who memorized the whole Bible in Hebrew and Koine Greek, and they just went, what? Is that the language? My point is not to put down the Bible. My point is to put down the people who lie about it. Because the more I studied the Hebrew and the Kone Greek, the more I began to realize that what I was learning from the Quran in English, I was reading English, Yusuf Ali, you remember? It was the same thing. Especially the one I read to you just now and they helped me with. Lam yalid. Well, lam yalid. Listen to this. I'm going to give you a translation of, of scripture. God is not a man. And God is not the son of man. Is this in the Quran? Is it in the Quran? Yes. But I didn't quote it from the Quran. I quoted it from the Bible. That's in the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should sin, and God is not the son of man that he'll repent. And when I read that, I said, now wait a minute. If it says here that God is not a son of man, then how is it in the New Testament it's saying Jesus is son of man, how could he be a God? I took it to one of my preacher friends and I said, hey, look at this. What do you say about this? You know what he said? He said, that's a big S, son of man. The other one's a little S, son of man. Now, I think, I think you already know, as most of the audience knows, there's no such thing as upper and lower case letters in Aramaic, Hebrew, or Arabic. It means they lied again. And then, another subject, another subject, saying Islam spread by the sword. Islam spread by the sword. I heard so many preachers telling me, get away from these Muslims. Islam spread by the sword. 604 pages, 114 chapters, 6,666 verses. Depending on how you count them up, guess what? And many words in Arabic for sword. Say, Muhammad, Hussam, I think 16 words for sword. Guess how many times I found the, any of those words in the Arabic? Zero. Not once. In the Bible, just the word sword. Over 200 times. Oops. Wait. You asked me. I'm just telling you. So when I take my Bible to the preacher and I said, excuse me, it says here that Jesus said, I did not come with peace. I came with a sword. And it's time to sell your coat and buy a sword. What did that mean? You know what he said? Listen to this. You'll never believe how people can lie. He said, don't you know this was done in Italy where they transcribed this stuff, the Latin, you know, it was in Italy. Rome is in Italy. Don't you know that? I said, yeah. He said, and they would work by candlelight at night and it was hard to see. Yeah. And while they were trying to translate, you know, put this down in the Latin language, you know what happened? They were eating spaghetti. The Italians, they like spaghetti. And spaghetti fell down and it was made an S. It was word. It wasn't sword. It was word. He said, I came with a word. And you know what's wrong with that? 
The word for word in Koine Greek is logos. Now how did they turn logos into sword? By dropping spaghetti on it. And here, excuse me, but what does it mean, sell your coat and buy a word? What is it, a game show on TV? I'd like to buy that word right there for $100, please. What is this? And the more I talked to them, the more I could see lie after lie after lie. And finally I said, you know what, I don't need to be in a religion full of liars. But it didn't convince me about Islam yet. Where I got convinced about Islam is over a separate subject. And then the Quran and the Bible backed it up. Right there, buddy, in the heart. Because nobody can play with your heart. That's yours. You own it. It's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. It is yours. Right? Yes. That's the one thing nobody can imprison. They can lock me in a prison, put me in a box, throw me in the ocean, but they can't control this. That's mine. That's yours. You own it. So if you get inside of that heart, like I did, and clean it out and throw all the trash and the garbage out of there, throw the lies out of there, the misconceptions, the prejudice, and just give it all up and say, you know what, I belong to God. I just belong to God. God, guide me. And that's what I did. And when I did that, I had this strange impression I need to put my head on the ground. And so I did that. With my head on the ground, I said these words, Gabriel. Oh God, if you're there, guide me. And when I got up, I realized something. I'm the one with the problem. The world's not the problem. I was the problem. And from that day to this day, 19 years, I'm saying the same thing every day, 17 times a day. Edina Sarathamu was the king, guide us to the straight path. Edina Sarathamu was the king, guide us to the straight path. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm not psychic. We don't believe in psychics and magic and all that stuff. We don't. But I'm going to tell you something. And now you, are, you brothers and sisters, are going to see something strange. Because Gabriel and I don't, never met. We're not setting this up. What I, he doesn't even know what I'm going to say. But Gabriel, you've been praying in your heart, asking God to guide you, or you wouldn't be standing there right now. Is that true or false? That is true. There you go. There's your verification. He said that's true. And I know it because I've been through this again and again and again. Thousands of people I watch come to Islam again and again, just like Gabriel. They're looking for truth. They're not looking for Islam. They're not looking for the Quran. They're just looking for truth, real truth. And because there's only one God and only one way to get to God, it has to be on His terms and there's only one way. And we said it in Adina, in the Lahi, Islam. The only thing Allah wants from you is this simple thing, your heart. That's what He wants. Give Him your heart and everything else will be fine. And how you do that? I'm going to give you five words in the English language. They have to be all at the same time. Surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. Do you want those things in your life? Yes, sir. I do too. Everybody in this room wants those things. All at the same time though, surrender, submission, obedience to His commandments. You know the Ten Commandments. We got the same thing. It's the same thing. It's not a new religion. And then sincerity, to be sincere. No lies, no showing off, no riyadh for Allah only. And finally, to be in peace with whatever He gives you, say, okay, thank you. Even if you like it, thank you. If you don't like it, 
thank you anyway because it's from him. Be in peace with it. This word in Arabic is one. It takes five words in English. You know what the word is in Arabic? No. Islam. Islam. Really? That's the word. privately I'm just going to ask again just confirm that you believe that God is really only one God I do believe there is okay. only one God so now say after me I swear I swear there's no God to worship except Allah there is no God to worship except Allah and I swear and I swear that Muhammad is his prophet that Muhammad is his prophet Allah. Now this next part is Arabic. It means the same thing, but when you say it, you're going to be saying the language that God sent it down in. The same language similar to Jesus and Abraham and Muhammad. You ready? I'll help you. Okay. Ash Hadu. Ash Hadu. An La. Hala. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa. Wa. Ash Hadu. Ashadu Ana Muhammad Ani Muhammad Rasulullah Rasulullah Perfect Inshallah Alhamdulillah How would you do that? No, we have some, I have some books that I want to give you and you, you have to, uh, you take care of them to come to the program with me after this Bring it back there, take care of it This is my son, this is my guest MashaAllah, this is exactly what Islam is. Once you present the truth, the truth is accepted. Shall we take the next question from the sister side? And preferably if we have non-Muslim guests here, then we would like to have a question from the sister side, from a non-Muslim sister, please. While we're getting the question up, uh, I wanted to say something to you. I want you to listen carefully. Gabriel has just entered Islam. A lot of us need to do the same thing. And you know what I meant by that. We have Muslim names, but do we really, really put it into practice? My new brother and I were just crying, holding each other. And I was reliving the experience of 19 years ago. And I needed somebody to hold me then and cry with me because what's happening the reason we cry you don't know this we do because we feel this rahma of Allah the mercy of Allah coming over us which is washing away the sins since the day we were born it's the message Jesus preached it's the message John the Baptist preached it's the message that Muhammad sallallahu preached that if you accept God as the one and only Savior all your sins are forgiven and you're newborn just like you came out of your mother. This man, Jibril, Gabriel, has no sins at all. He is pure in front of Allah. His prayers are being accepted right now, whatever he prays for. Anybody else today not a Muslim, raise your hand. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa uh, Brother, there's a sister here who's a non-Muslim. Her name is Saul. Oh, and she wants to take shahada today, inshallah. Allah She's made up her mind. Allahu Akbar! 
Okay, because we like to uh, give special privacy and uh, consideration brother, to the sisters, I'm not going to go back there. I'll do it from here, okay? Yes, brother, but go slow because she's very nervous and shy. She wants you to just say slowly. She will, inshallah, repeat after you. I swear. I swear. I swear. There's no God to worship. There's no God to worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I swear. And he swore. Muhammad is his messenger. Muhammad is his messenger. Allah. Allah. Now we'll do the Arabic real slow. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An la. An la. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An Muhammad. Al Muhammad. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Brother Yusuf, I would like to tell you that she has chosen a name for herself. She wants to be called Aisha. Aisha? Yes. That's my daughter's name. Allahu Akbar. You know what? When I was in Germany with uh, our brothers there, they brought one up on the stage and he made shahada. And then another one came on the stage and each time I would say, is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? You know? And Brother, they kept coming. Can... Yes. There is another one here. Allah Akbar. Subhanallah. 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 Allah Akbar. What's her name? Hani. Okay, her name is Hani and she wants to also take shahada, inshallah. Allah Akbar. Okay. Uh, just repeat after me, sister. Okay. I swear. I swear. There's no God to worship. There is no God to worship. Except one God. Except one God. A Allah. Allah. And I swear. And I swear. Muhammad is his messenger. Muhammad is the messenger. Allah Akbar. Okay, now the Arabic, if you say it slow after me, it'll be easy for you. Ready? Okay. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An la. An la. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illaha. Illaha. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna Muhammad. Anna Muhammad. Rasulullah. Allah. Uh, Allah Akbar. I was telling you about what happened in Germany. I kept saying, who's next? Who is next? And they would, when we were finished, they would say, okay, let's go. I said, no, no, ask who's next. Finally, because almost everybody there is not Muslim, I said, who in the audience would like to be a Muslim? And they all stood up. 1,250 people took shahada all at the same time. Allahu Akbar. And just like today, and since the time of our Rasul Sallallahu it has never been by us. It's been by Allah. Allah is the one who guides. Not me, not you. Not even Muhammad Sallallahu because, because the Prophet Sallallahu wants his uncle, Abi Talib, to accept Islam. And he didn't. And what did Allah say? He's talking to Rasul Sallallahu but he's talking to us too. Verily you do not guide the one you love. Rather it is Allah who guides to his straight path. Today you and I have witnessed three people enter into this guidance. The guidance of Allah while we were talking about his Habib. 
the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a beautiful gift that Allah let us be a part of to see it. Because whoever is in such a jama'ah as this, inshallah is also receiving the rahmah, the maghfir of Allah as well. So this is more important for us than anything else because this is the salvation. Allahu Akbar. Gabriel, you'll be with me later. They're going to bring you back to where we're going to be. We'll talk some more. I have some things to give you. The sisters, please also bring the sisters over to the same place. We have another. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Sorry, brother, again. There is another one. Subhanallah. We are very lucky to be I ask you, if all the Bibles in the world were thrown in the ocean, who would produce the Bible again? Nobody could, because they don't even agree about what the Bible is now. But if all the Qurans were thrown into the ocean right now, all of them, we could produce the Quran all over again. We could bring a Chinese, Hafiz, Memorizer of the Quran, a Russian memorizer of the Quran, an American memorizer of the Quran, a German memorizer of the Quran, who didn't even know each other. They would all come here together, and in two days, they could all recite simultaneously, and the Quran is back again. You owe it to yourself to read this powerful scripture. Don't ignore it. You cannot afford to ignore it. Either it's profound, either it's from God, either it is comprehensive, either it is as I say it is, or it is not. At least you should investigate it. Why should you be blind to something that might have that kind of impact on your life and the life of others? After all, this is not the legislation of Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. It is the legislation of whom? Almighty God.